Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Options Analytics in CQG Integrated Client. I'm Betty Smith. I'm Vice President of Communications here at CQG. And joining us as our presenter is our very own Gene O'Sullivan. Welcome, Gene. Well, thank you very much. All right, so before we get started, I will run through just a little bit of housekeeping as always. Uh, I want all of you to know that today's webinar is being recorded in case you want to listen to it again. If you have any technical issues at any point during the webinar, please use the chat feature of the WebEx Event Center. So when we're in the uh, web conferencing view, you can use the chat feature, which is in the middle right-hand side of your screen. When we're in full screen view, there's a floating toolbar, and you can use the chat feature there. So if you have any problems with the sound or anything else, please use the chat and talk to our host. Uh, Gene is going to do a demo today, and so if you have questions as he's going along and showing all the features and functionality of what we have for Optus, please use the Q&A feature. And again, that's in the lower right-hand part of your screen, or when we're in full screen view, you can submit a question using that floating toolbar. All right, so now I get to introduce Gene, which is a pleasure. Uh, Gene's been with us as a product specialist for the past eight years. Uh, his niche, his specialty is options analysis. Uh, he has a long and illustrious career in options. Uh, starting working for Options first in Chicago, then for Conti Commodity, and finally for Shearson Lehman before joining CQG. So it's my very great pleasure to welcome Gene today. And then I'm just going to talk briefly about G what Gene's going to be covering. Uh, as I mentioned, it's going to be a demo, so it's a live demo in our product, the CQG Integrated Client. And Gene's going to give an overview of Options Analytics in the product. So first he's going to show you evaluation models, volatility charts, the options graph, and options calculator. And then he'll go on to more of the advanced options functionality and take a look at the volatility workshop as well as options strategy analysis. So Gene, if you're ready, we'll pass it off to you for the live demo. Okay. All right, good afternoon. Um, I take it you can see my uh, my screen, and uh, what I have showing right now is a uh, is a uh, chart. And um, any discussion on options at some point in time turns to volatility. So let's cover that. Uh, let's cover that first. There's uh, there's four types of volatility. Uh, there's uh, implied volatility, which is the amount of volatility assumed by the market. And at CQG, we use the volatilities implied by the Cox-Ross-Rubenstein model, which calculates implied volatilities by taking a weighted average of some of the possible underlying expiration prices. And I am showing the implied volatility uh, uh, at this brown line that is on the chart. And I have uh, chosen to overlay it on the chart. You can bring this up as a subgraph if you'd like. Uh, you can use it as a line or a bar or a uh, histogram, whatever. Uh, you can bring it up separately on a chart by using an implied volatility symbol. But I've chosen today to put it on the chart. So this brown line right now reflects a implied volatility of 17.15. Uh, now, how we calculate this is dependent upon the um, underlying instrument. And as all of the studies in CQG, we have a uh, online uh, in, in the software tutorial. So to find out uh, how that's uh, calculated, you can always just right click on the implied volatility and you can select uh, info under the setup study parameters and you can just page through this and it will explain how this is uh, calculated. Okay. All right, the second um, type of volatility is historical volatility. Now that measures the market's past uh, volatility. And it's um, typically defined as a standard deviation of a series of price changes measured at uh, in, uh, regular intervals. And uh, this is uh, this uh, subgraph, the first subgraph. And this is the uh, historical volatility, right now priced at 12.28. And this is based on the S&P 500, and I have this on a uh, daily uh, chart. 
Um, the bottom graph is the difference between the implied volatility and the historical volatility. This is a custom study, uh, which is a sample within CQG that you can uh, pull up and uh, put on a chart. Uh, the third type of volatility is called future volatility. And uh, nobody knows the future volatility. Uh, the fourth type of volatility is forecast volatility. And I think the original forecast for volatility probably was uh, Fisher Black back in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, and he's from the uh, Black Scholes model, Fisher Black. And he used to um, put out uh, volatility forecasts, three, six, nine months for uh, equity um, equities. Um, now, I'm going to try to forecast a little bit of volatility here, and I'll show you how one approach that you can use. Now, there are services out there. I think the, probably the most popular one is called Garch, and they supply volatilities. But uh, what I have done is, on the uh, chart, I have a histogram up here. This is the histogram of the S&P. I have the implied volatility, which is this uh, brown line. And what I've done is I've applied two uh, moving averages. I applied a 50-period moving average, and I applied a 200-period moving average. And the way I'm using this is if uh, volatility uh, is trading above the 50-period moving average, then I'm going to look for a return to the mean. And the mean I'm using here is the 200-day uh, moving average which is representative by this uh, magenta line, and that's currently at 22.56. So that's my plan. My plan right now is I believe that the market, this particular market, the S&P, is in a correction, and I believe that uh, implied volatility is going to continue the rise. I'm looking for it to go to the, uh, the mean, 22%. Uh, I'm looking for the market to probably break sharply. And as a chartist, uh, when I look at the chart, I'm looking at this particular point in the market, which for a pure chartist is the most important point. It's the low point between the last two highs. Uh, this is also a balance point, as you can see back here in the past. Uh, this uh, represented uh, step resistance, and here it now is uh, support. And if the market breaks down through here, then secondarily we look for the market to go probably to the top of this congestion area, which is also a balance point, as you can see by this previous uh, data. So that's my plan. My plan is uh, right now, if I'm forecasting volatility, I think it's going to increase, I think the market is going down, and I'll start to apply some option strategies to uh, take, it, uh, take advantage of that. Okay. All right, in CQG, we have uh, option windows. We have different uh, views. And um, there's actually three types of uh, views. There is the uh, standard view. There is the uh, theoretical versus underlying. And there is the Greek view. This is the uh, standard view. And this is the EMIDI S&P. And this is showing uh, across the top. You can see it has the April, May, June, July calls. And then it has puts on the uh, right-hand side. And CQG can all, almost customize anything. So I can, uh, through the Setup button, change this display where I have April calls, April puts, May calls, May puts, so on and so forth. Uh, it's um, color-coded uh, to show if the uh, particular uh, strike uh, was up on the day, down on the day, uh, whether it has traded on the day, magenta if it has not. Um, now, this is just one of the displays under what we call standard. And over on the left-hand side, which we call the left-hand toolbar, which you're familiar with, this will change depending upon what is the active window. Uh, I have this shows in last price. You can display theoretical value, which will have the theoretical value and the change from the uh, previous day, uh, delta, uh, last price in a delta, gamma, theta, vega, implied volatility. So you have your choice in the standard view of uh, choosing any of those. Uh, the second view we call the uh, theoretical versus uh, underlying price. And the title bar will tell you what display that you are um, that you're uh, showing. And what this one uh, does, if you were a floor trader in options, you would probably remember using something like this. And what this reflects is uh, all of the strike prices and the futures prices over on the left-hand side. 
and uh, it will intersect the strike price to the uh, futures price. So uh, 138 strike with a future price of 138.250 has a theoretical value of 39.63. Uh, okay. The third type of view we have is called the uh, Greek view. And the Greek view can be uh, adjusted as well. You can, uh, you can select the columns that you would like across the top. You can uh, select the order of the uh, columns uh, across the top. We have the information uh, going into the models. In CQG, we have a choice of um, seven different uh, theoretical models. Um, the first one was the Black Shoals uh, back in the early 70s, mainly used for equities. The black, which was kind of adjusted for futures because futures don't have dividends. There's a Bertov model. That's to be Dimitri Bertov. He uh, works for CQG. He created a process where he takes the previous day's volatility curve, he merges it with the current day's volatility curve, and then he inputs that into the black model and produces theoretical values in associated Greeks. Kassaros Rubenstein has been around for a while, binomial model. Garmin Cohagen is for uh, currencies, and the Merton and Whaley are very similar to the, uh, to the black. And uh, you can filter as well. Over on the uh, price uh, column over here, I have bids and offers. But you can select whether you want just bids, just offers, if you want just last price, which in some option series that don't trade a lot, uh, if you change it in the last price, you can actually see what is kind of active and not, because generally all of them will have a bid and, uh, and an offer. You can uh, change the screen. It shows uh, one month. Uh, these are calls. You can change it in the puts, back to calls. You can move it forward or backward by using these uh, arrows. The thing that we use the Greek uh, window for is uh, to do a lot of our what ifs. And uh, if you recall, when I was forecasting volatility, I was forecasting volatilities to go from around the 70% level up to around 22, which is my mean. Now there's uh, 66 days till expiration for this contract, the June contract. So I would be looking for a volatility to increase over that uh, time. And in the what if area, what I can do is I can actually shift the volatility. If I expect, let's say, that volatility might go up 1% every two weeks, and I can um, click in 1%, click on Apply, and what it's going to do is change all of the theoretical values in the associated Greeks on this particular window to reflect an increase of 1% volatility. So you can choose to uh, do what ifs on underlying price, uh, volatility, interest rates, days to um, expiration. Back to the actual. Okay. So we have the uh, standard view, theoretical, under and over, and we have the uh, Greek view. And um, you can do the what ifs in there. And now we're going to go, this is where you're looking at this information. You're looking at the deltas and gammas and thetas and so on and so forth. And we're looking at it in kind of numeric form. So we have um, something called an options graph. And you can, uh, you can get to it several different ways. You can have a button up on the top of the computer if you want top of the window, or you can uh, right click on a price on the uh, Greek window and uh, select options graph. Now what this is going to do is this is going to display a graph on uh, your choosing, um, and that again you go over to the left hand toolbar, and uh, let's go delta, here's the delta. Uh, I can choose calls only. So here you see all of the strike prices and the deltas associated with it. So you can see where the deltas change from at the money, in the money, so on and so forth. You can choose puts. You can choose uh, both if you want. And if you deal with clients and you like to kind of customize views to what maybe your client is most interested in, you can actually go into the display area and you can build your own display, how you want it graphed, with what type of information. Um, I can choose price, delta, closing price, last price, yesterday's close. So you can really build your own. Uh, so it's very, um, it's very flexible uh, in doing that. So that's the options graph. Now we can do what ifs, of course, in the Greek um, page that I showed you. But we have another source. And it's called an options calculator. And in the options calculator, 
what you're going to do is you're going to look at one series uh, of options. And the selection I have here in the uh, contract area uh, is the e, uh, e, uh, mini s and and you can change that. Uh, I'm selecting the June call. The strike is 139.50. Uh, the model I'm using is Whaley, but I can change that to whatever I would like. And um, this is the what if area that I can uh, go in and put in my selections. Uh, the calculation for that will come over here in this particular portion of the window. And I am selecting theoretical value. So this is going to be the current theoretical value of this particular option in the associated Greeks. So if I wanted to do a what if here on this one particular option series, let's say I'm going to go in and change the underlying price, which currently is 138.600 under actuals, and I'll go up to 140.000. And now when I press the enter key, you'll see that the premium or the theoretical value for that option will change accordingly. And here it will go up to a price of 4031. Uh, clicking on the actual button clears that out. Now, this particular window uh, has all of this graphing information, premium, delta, gamma, theta, uh, rho, which is interest rate. And it also shows the volatility skew. And you can show that um, puts alone uh, or calls alone. Uh, and in addition to showing the implied volatilities for each of the strikes, what it is doing is displaying a polynomial curve based on yesterday uh, implied volatilities uh, settlements. Um, now, one of the things that in this particular window, which I can't, uh, we don't really have in other windows, is I can solve for a change in the option price as to how it will affect uh, implied volatility. Uh, for example, when I have the uh, radio button uh, to the left of theoretical value, you'll notice that these white cells are what I can input to, uh, to change the theoretical value uh, based on my assumptions. Uh, if I want to see what the implied volatility will change for a particular options price, if I click on implied volatility, it now opens up the uh, cell to the right of option price. So the current option price is uh, 3325. Current implied volatility is 1619. And I'm going to click in here, and I'm going to change this price to, uh, oh, let's go 3800. And now when I press the Enter key, it's going to reflect what the implied volatility would change to if the option price, price were to uh, spike from the 33 area to the uh, 38. So 1619 goes to 18.25. So um, I find that kind of uh, kind of handy uh, to uh, to use once in a while, or I used to. Okay, so this is the options uh, calculator. Now, again with volatility, since we like to kind of forecast it, so we can compare what the current price is to our forecasted theoretical value, and then put positions on accordingly, and and then hedge the positions accordingly. Uh, we have um, an enablement called a volatility workshop. And a volatility workshop uh, looks like this. Um, it has a uh, contracts uh, area, which you can change the symbol. It has a um, call uh, area, option area, that you can select what calls or uh, put you onto uh, views. Um, it has um, a approximation area. It has a modification area. Uh, it has a price area, which is up here. And down here, this is the meat of it. Uh, this is an implied volatility curve. And it displays the implied volatility based on the, uh, compared to the implied volatility curve to if the options are traded uh, that particular day. Uh, here, if it's a uh, magenta circle, they did not. Here it will show if the implied volatility is greater or less than the applied volatility curve. Uh, there's a lot of information that you can select up here in the viewing area. Uh, for example, if I want to see yesterday's curve, uh, a put call curve, yesterday's applied volatility is a net change. And I can have that reflected on the top so I can see the actual detail. And I can also see that particular information uh, in the form of a graph. But 
the, the use of this, what we use this for is, remember I think volatility is going to increase. And uh, I changed that on the Greek page so I could see what the volatility, uh, based on the volatility, my change volatility, what the theoretical values would go to. Well, in the volatility workshop, I can take and move this implied volatility curve. And over on the left-hand toolbar, I have uh, many choices that I can uh, choose. I can choose uh, vertical shape, horizontal shape, this is the curve, uh, position or slope. So now I think volatility is going to increase. So I'm going to click on position. And when I do that, what it's going to do is it's going to put this diamond, this red diamond here uh, at the uh, current uh, price. And uh, I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to move that up. And what it's doing is it's moving, I'm going to click it again to lock it, it's moving the implied volatility up. And that will reflect the new theoretical values. But I don't want them reflected here, per se. I'm going to take this new implied volatility curve that I have adjusted. And I'm going to click on the Apply button. And when I do that, that means I can take this curve and I can use this. I can use this as input into the options window. Like I can feed this into the Greek page. And it will use this implied volatility curve to produce the theoretical values in the associated Greeks. Uh, or I can take this curve and I can input this into another enablement that we have in CQG, which is called option strategy. It's our option strategy window. And the option strategy window looks like this. And this is a great tool. It's a great educational tool, uh, as well as a, a tool for analyzing the uh, market. And let me squeeze this together. Uh, on these uh, views, just like on charts, we can drag these, we can move these, so on and so forth. So we can put more information on the scales. Uh, both the uh, X and the Y axis. And um, this window, it consists of a strategy area. And when I click on this drop down, you're probably going to recognize a lot of the names that have been created over the years since the start of the CBOE in 73, I guess. And um, so here we have a bull call spread, a long straddle, long strangle, um, bear call spreads, covered rice, strangles, uh, straddles, butterflies, back spreads, synthetic spreads, uh, Christmas trees, the old Christmas tree. Um, so what I have selected here is a uh, long call spread. And when I do that, when I type in a symbol, it's automatically going to build a long call spread uh, based on using the near-term uh, future, in this case for the E-mini is the uh, June contract. And it's going to uh, build the position using strikes that are around the money, which is logical since they're the most, uh, most liquid at that particular uh, time. And uh, everything in the white cell that you see here can be changed. So um, this automatically came up when I clicked on bull call spread. Uh, a June 139.50 call that it went long, and a 140 uh, call that it went uh, short. But if I want to widen that call spread, uh, I can click, let's say, on this particular um, strike, and then I can raise that to a, um, to a higher strike price if I want a wider uh, call spread. Um, I can put in quantities. I can, uh, it'll put in an entry uh, based on the selection that you uh, deem as a default, and I have theoretical value. And it shows additional information on the right side, days to expiration, full symbol, so on and so forth. All this information here um, that is, um, has a yellow background can be, uh, can be changed. Uh, uh, it can be, it's custom. It's custom display. So you can choose what information you want on this particular tab, the uh, trades tab, and in what order that uh, you want it. Um, over here, I have a uh, Greeks tab. And the Greeks tab will show the spread. It will show the uh, Greeks for the spread. And it will show the individual uh, Greeks uh, for, the, uh, for the legs. So if you have a spread on, if you're going to you know, uh, get out of one leg, you know what the uh, Greeks are for the uh, remaining one. 
Uh, it also costs, uh, shows the cost, cost of this position. This is going to cost me uh, $125. It'll tell me what my maximum gain is, what my maximum loss is, so on and so forth. Uh, my break even, um, uh, uh, prices at break even, so on and so forth. Again, all of this information can be uh, customized as to what you want to see and what order that you want to see it. And then we have some stuff at trace time, volume, and open interest, and so on and so forth. Okay? All right. You'll notice here on this particular uh, long call spread, uh, there's um, two lines on display. Uh, the first line is uh, the red line, the first one that I'm pointing to. And that's what the theoretical value currently is of this particular p uh, position. And the green line uh, is the uh, position at uh, expiration. And uh, this has a maximum uh, gain and it has a maximum loss. Now the, gro the magenta image, the background here, this actually reflects uh, something that we've used uh, quite a bit in uh, dealing with options is standard deviation. And this is a one standard deviation of price from now until expiration, which is 64 days for the uh, June uh, contracts. And um, you can extend that if you would like. So it's just a one standard deviation has a 68 probability. So there's a 68% probability that the uh, price will be, tr be trading between this value and this value. Uh, over on the left-hand side, we have a range tab. And I can put two standard deviations on there if I would like. So now there's a 95% tile that will be trading between these particular price levels. And three standard deviations. And you can even go up and put in four, five, six, whatever you would like. Of course, we all know that uh, it really doesn't go that high. Well, yes, I guess it does. If you remember October of 1987, where we had a 10 standard deviation uh, move. OK, so here we have the display where we have uh, the P&L. You can uh, display delta, gamma, theta, vega, uh, interest rate, time value, see the time decay. And you also can have a table uh, of the uh, information if you like to look at, uh, at, the, uh, at the numbers. And um, we use this mainly for the what if area. We want to do a what if on this particular spread or whatever we have selected. Uh, and uh, we have shortcuts in CQG. And I can come over uh, to the volatility area. I can click on an individual cell and I can put in a volatility and then that will re be reflected uh, as a line on the particular uh, chart on the graph here. Uh, or we have a shortcut that I can uh, click on, uh, double click on the word volatility, and it's going to wrap around the current implied volatility going above it and going below it and produce those particular lines on the uh, graph. Uh, I can do that with volatility. I can do it with volatility shift. I can do it with interest rates, and I can do it with uh, days to uh, expiration. I can use a shortcut, or I can um, type in a one particular day if I want, 40 days, expiration, hit the answer key, and boom. And it will reflect that this is 40 days. So everything remaining the same except for time has uh, passed. Uh, you, can, um, you can look at this in uh, two dimensions. Uh, you can look at this at uh, three dimensions if you want. So we have a, uh, a 3D button over there, so you get uh, a little bit more of a display of um, the variable, you know, time with, this, uh, with the associated variables. And you can, you know, move this around if you would like to have a nice view. Okay, go back to uh, two-dimensional. Now, uh, on this list over here, we have uh, these uh, pre-formatted templates of strategies. But you can also uh, click on Customize. And with Customize, you can put in whatever strategy you want or whatever list of uh, strikes underlying that you uh, have, want to analyze. So I'm going to add one here, EP. Oh, let's go to a put. Make that short. Um, we'll leave it like it is. Okay, so now I have, as you can see, I've added another position to this. It is now a customized position. It is reflected on the uh, chart as to what the current value is theoretically and what it looks like at uh, expiration. Now, we all, we like to be able to analyze these positions. Um, when we add to the position or maybe when we offset 
one of the positions. If we're long 10 of something and we sell 10 of the same thing, that it will zero it out. And in CQG, with the option strategy window, uh, you have the capability of saving. I can save this particular strategy and I can save it uh, to one uh, or two places. I can save them both if I want. I can save it to a workspace uh, where it will uh, put it on a file and then I can recall it. I can load that back and it will load it back in uh, as that particular strategy. Or I can save it to a local account. And when I save it to a local account, I'm actually saving it into our orders and positions area. So I have all the functionalities of orders and positions. So I'm going to save this to a local account, a local account that I built uh, in the um, orders and positions uh, area. And this one I call Tim, so I'm going to add that. And as you can see here, it's grayed that uh, position out, and now it's uh, going to be located in the uh, orders and positions uh, window. And it's going to be under uh, Tim because that's where I put it. So these are the options, that particular strategy that I have saved here. And uh, I have, as I say, I have all the functionality of the uh, orders and positions uh, window. And then I can reload that back. Here I'm going to go to a, a different little strategy. I'm going to go back to the load button. Load for my uh, account, I'm selecting Tim or whatever, and then I can load it back. And now when I load it back, I have all the functionality here. I can see the Greeks and everything of this position, but here I can add to my strategy. Okay, I can add to my strategy. Now I've added some more uh, to it. And uh, then again, I can save it again uh, into the orders and positions. I can reload it and, uh, and uh, again. So I have that position. I have some users. So what they kind of do is they'll set a uh, file. And, and, and when I say you have an account, this is like a simulated account that you've built in the orders and position file. This is not your real live account um, if you trade through uh, CQG. So it's not impacting that. Uh, if you do trade options through CQG Live, it will go into your live account. So these positions here are going into a simulated account that I built in the orders and uh, positions uh, window, which is very, uh, very easy to do. Uh, and you must remember that in CQG, uh, as with all of our, um, our windows, um, on the top of your uh, CQG window, you have a question mark. And if you left click on that question mark, you can left click on the active window, and it will go into that part of the manual uh, for uh, that active window. And uh, we have those manuals on our website. We have videos on our website, so on and so forth. Uh, but here you have information right at your fingertips uh, that if you're looking for an answer for something, you can just click on through it and it will give you the information as to uh, what this um, option strategy window is, uh, is all about. Okay. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is um, entering options in uh, CQG. And uh, we have uh, several different uh, uh, input uh, uh, possibilities. We have uh, the DOM trader, the depth of market, which is, uh, you know, very popular. We, uh, and if we're doing options, what we can do, this is an option I have out here, and over on the right side column here, I have selected I want to see the implied volatility. Uh, I can choose implied volatility, delta, gamma, theta, so on and so forth, uh, all of the various uh, black, uh, the, the Greeks. Uh, from whatever model that I choose as well. So here I have delta reflected over here. And um, I can link this window. I can link it into an options window. I can, a Greek window or a last price window or whatever I want. Um, or I can link it into, in this particular example, I have a quote spreadsheet. And I have linked this, making this the master, the red square up here, and I made this the uh, slave. So uh, if I click on uh, an option in the quote spreadsheet on the list there, uh, it will automatically uh, change and be reflected in the uh, Don Trader. So I can go out there and I can um, you know, do my orders uh, accordingly. Uh, or I can trade directly from the quote spreadsheet. And uh, I do have some limitations on the quote spreadsheet uh, where I can do uh, market orders, 
I can join the bid. Uh, I can join the offer. I can actually sweep the bid or the offer, the inside market. Right click to uh, short 50 at 46.25, 50 being the volume on the bid. Um, and this, uh, you can choose columns across, um, again, your selection and what order. And it will give you all the information that you, um, that you need to follow your open positions and so on and so forth. Uh, the thing that this does not allow you to do is to do uh, limit orders, uh, stop orders, bracket orders, OC orders, so on and so forth. Uh, but it's very, very functional. Uh, you can load this uh, quote spreadsheet by using a shortcut we have in CQG where you can just load the at the money uh, strike and uh, strikes above or below four or five, six of your, uh, of your choice. Now there is a new window that we're going to have available probably in about, oh, within the next uh, quarter. So it will probably be two quarters as programming goes. But what that will do is it's going to combine our portfolio monitor window and the quote spreadsheet window. And uh, you'll be able to see uh, charting information, study information, condition information, as you can see now on the portfolio monitor. But you'll also have this particular uh, information that you'll be able to do market orders, uh, limit orders. And the way you're going to be able to do a limit order is if you uh, click on the, um, the um, option symbol, it'll open up. It'll separate right there and give you a DOM. Uh, part of a DOM, it will give you, of your choice, you can see five or ten or whatever uh, number of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, prices up and down. So just like a little mini DOM ladder clicking on the price over here. So you'll be able to do almost everything from that particular one, uh, one sheet. Uh, you have the pricing information. You can do your orders. You can do any type of order. You can uh, see... Uh, study information that would be on a chart. You can click, launch a, launch a chart from there. So it's very, very flexible. I'm using it a little bit in an alpha right now, and I'm uh, quite impressed uh, on the uh, functionality. So I think our time is uh, pretty much up for the uh, presentation. So if you, uh, if you have a, um, a question or whatever, uh, and if I can answer it, please uh, forward it to, uh, to uh, Betty Smith. Yeah, that would be great. Um, we'd love to take any questions that you might have for Gene, as he said. And while we're waiting to see if anything's going to come in, I want to mention that our next webinar uh, will be May 8th. It's going to feature uh, Manesh Patel, a technical analyst and author of Ichimoku Cloud. So that should be interesting. And we have a nice lineup through the rest of the year as well. Gene, we're waiting to see if there are any questions. All right. So it was a, a nice overview of what's available um, in terms of options analysis, both basic and advanced. And Gene, I think with that, we'll wrap it up. We don't have any questions, but I do want to let everyone know that if you do have a question for Gene, uh, as you can see here, you can contact him directly. Uh, his email is gene at cqg.com. As I mentioned at the very beginning of the webinar today, the webinar has been recorded if you'd like to view it again, and we'll get that out to you in the next couple of days. Uh, the recording will also be available on our real-time news site, news.cqg.com, under events, and that's where you can find all of our recorded webinars in the CQG webinar series. All right, Gene, thanks once again. That was a, a great presentation. Fantastic. Have a great evening and uh, good night. All right. Thank you.